What is going on, guys? It is Adam and K. Marf, and today's show is going to be packed, so stick around. We're going to be going over the last 24 hours and everything that has transpired. So stick around. We have uh, sources to back everything up here, so stay buckled up. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. Remember, you can get notifications from us if YouTube or any other platform isn't giving them to you. Marfuglenews.com. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today is a live show. It is also a live call-in show. So, again, you would want to call in at 2244 marf If you've never called in before, you are highly encouraged to do so. Uh, we want to hear from new people. We have anywhere from uh, three to 6,000 people listen every day, uh, so it's definitely a great audience and uh, great people here. So if you uh, feel like it, you can also jump into chat, say hello to the mods who do a great job of keeping it awesome and peaceful down there. Uh, so if you've never been here, we actually make sure to back up almost everything we have here. If we show you a picture, a tweet, a video, a document, we try to make sure that we have a source for that so that way you know exactly where your stories are coming from. That will all be over on marfuglenews.com. Now, if you need to get there and you don't know how, just make sure to go to that first link in the description. Now, when you go to our website, you'll see it's very easy to navigate. It is all done by thumbnail. And uh, it is very, very easy uh, to get to all of the links and sources. Once you click on Urban Nam, uh, Gorilla No Fair, uh, you will see that we have every single link, article, tweet, anything that we show you here, you can actually follow along. In fact, if you grab a second device, you can read along, read ahead, read behind, whichever you prefer. And then over on the right side, if you do want to support us in any way, all of our affiliates are over there. Affiliates are essentially when uh, we show you a product that we believe in. Uh, if you end up purchasing that, we end up getting a commission from that that helps us uh, with our ecosystem especially since we cover controversial subjects and we do not get treated uh, the same uh, that's for sure uh, so again if you go down that side you can also do a paypal that helps support dex uh, that also helps support my family so thank you everybody that does that um, and then down at the bottom is web only content that it, yeah that yellow bar essentially means that this stuff is too hot for tv too far to one direction uh, for us to cover here uh, the stuff that people are getting knocked off for that is all down there uh, there is a ton a ton down there it's an entire other show uh, definitely do not forget to check that out let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother dex how are you doing today and what is going on well, hello adam and hello fugle fam i am doing just fine so Dex is going to be on the phone. If you call 2244 marf or 2244-006273, you will get a phone tree. Once you get to that, just press option four and it will get you directly to Dex. Uh, again, that is uh, highly encouraged for first time callers to call in. If you are military, ex-military, retired, uh, if you have family that just deployed and, and you know something that can be publicly acknowledged, let us know. Uh, we are trying to fill in all the gaps here. We're trying to figure out uh, just really what's going on. Uh, again, civilians are the last people to know. Of course, we don't want anybody to get in trouble, but at the same time, uh, if there is something that we are missing, 
a public document or a public disclosure that's right there on a government website or something, let us know so we can cover it. Uh, otherwise, anything. If you have a sighting, send us a video at marfuglenews.com. Play my video. All right, now let's get right into it. Uh, thank you, Tristan Early. Love and light. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for supporting before the show even started. So we've talked about the metaverse, and some of you may not know what the metaverse is, but the metaverse is essentially a virtual world that Zuckerberg has talked about, and it will be in virtual reality, and or uh, you'll have a Neuralink hooked up, and you'll be in this virtual world in the future. I, I know they said that because I, I heard him in a conversation uh, interviewing saying, you know, in the future, you may have a connection straight into the metaverse. We're talking about something out of a Black Mirror episode. In fact, one of the uh, best Black Mirror episodes and worst at the same time, if you think about it. Uh, but again, this is something that is a nightmarish sci-fi thing that is happening. Uh, now, Metaverse real estate sales top $500 million and are projected to double this year. So a lot of people are probably looking at this and going, okay, time to invest in Meta. Facebook has pretty much done it again, and I, I and I actually do believe this is going to be a monster because Facebook was already a monster. Facebook accumulated so many companies that some of them uh, branched out, and they actually were being looked at for being monopoly because they owned all of these different companies. Well, a, f a few years back, uh, Facebook and Zuckerberg acquired Oculus, the virtual reality headset, uh, that company that made these really great headsets and really great uh, software for it. And uh, those headsets and that virtual reality is really good as it is, uh, but it is getting better and better to the point where uh, it really does immerse you and you forget that you are in it. And that is with, you know... Uh, it is really high quality, but it, it's not like real life. It's not uh, It's not even to where the movies that are animated with CGI are at now, uh, but it is getting closer and closer every day. Even without that, because your eyes and your brain are seeing it like it's right in front of you and around you, it really does immerse you. I, I, have, uh, uh, I had the original Oculus. And uh, again, the, the new ones, you all have to have a, a Facebook for which I don't have anymore. So, uh, and of course, I kept using it with somebody else's Facebook, but it was like, uh, you had to. It was a big deal that you had to have a Facebook account, which was really uh, smart and really stupid at the same time of, of Zuckerberg to do. But here's the thing. This metaverse is going to be a, a virtual world where, say you're walking down Google Maps, and Google Maps will be a walkable thing. Uh, you'll have some sort of contraption in your living room, uh, just like you saw in Ready Player One, where you're walking in, in on a, a treadmill that goes all ways, and you actually feel like you're walking in a city, and you can see everything around you. Well, you could walk uh, to Egypt, and on the walls will be advertisements paid for and bought by local companies. In fact, as creepy as it gets and how you think your phone can predict what you are thinking or if it's listening to you, all of those algorithms will apply in the metaverse. So these these elites are seeing a gigantic uh, dollar sign that just does not stop. When you are in games, you could be in GTA, the new GTA 6, and it will have local ads. It will be a real trip. Think about this. You are in a virtual GTA playing GTA, but first person, and you are really running. You are running from the police. You are, you know, taking a car. You are doing all of those things in your mind. It looks real. It feels real. Uh, they even have uh, gear that you can wear, clothes that will shock you, uh, that will vibrate and make you feel like you're getting hit. These things are all things that are not uh, not only coming, uh, but are virtually almost here, and uh, actually physically almost here, and some of them are here. So these things, imagine that, but then as you're running down the street of, uh, you know, Los Santos uh, 2.0, you see ads for your local pizzeria. Your local pizzeria will pay top dollar to get that ad in front of you inside the video game. Then when you pop your headset out, uh, off, you will end up going to that pizzeria and you won't even know you got advertised to. So, and it will be a trip. I mean, it, it, when people see it, I think they're going to be blasted away that, that, you know, these things are going to happen. They're going to go, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Imagine GTA being personalized to you. 
I mean, it's just nuts. And that's just one example. There's going to be pretty much every game you think of, they'll fit in there. And you think, oh, I don't play video games. In the future, they're going to make normal things. You could go shopping in a Costco. Uh, in fact, uh, Walmart has just filed patents. They want you to go shopping in Walmart. Say the next V comes out and everybody's scared to go out of their house. You would go shopping in Walmart in your virtual setup, which they've made the actual setup by this point very cheap so everyone can attain it. Then you get in your virtual setup and you are walking around a virtual Walmart. Sounds stupid, but watch. They'll have all of the real products just as if you are in the real store as you grab them with your controller and it feels like you're really grabbing them or your glove or whatever they come up with by then it will automatically uh, ring you up for that in real life and then it will be at your door that same day within an hour, within 10 minutes, like you were actually shopping or in the, about the amount of time that you actually could drive to the store. This sounds far-fetched. Well, to most of us, it doesn't anymore because this is happening and this is what the elites want. They want us in our house. They want us spending our money. Uh, as much as we can, and uh, they don't want to see us. They don't even want to see us walking around. They want us in our little pods uh, making them money. But yeah, the sales of this have gone up, and extreme real estate sales on the four major metaverse platforms reached 501 million in 2021, according to Metametric Solutions. Sales in January topped 85 million, the metaverse data provider said. It projects that at this pace, sales could reach nearly 1 billion this year. And then we have home medicine delivery drones set to grow in 2022. This is almost behind because they had the technology to do this for a long time. They're actually pretty slow on this, in my opinion. But once it goes, it's going to go. And you're going to see drones in the sky like you've never seen before. Uh, you'll see, th oh, that's a plane. No, that's a drone. And it's carrying an Amazon box or a Walgreens box with a prescription in it. And it will drop it right at your front porch. This is now happening. And this is, again, something that seems so futuristic. We're finally hitting the the sci-fi future that they all thought we were going to have uh, in the, you know, all the way back to when sci-fi started. It says battery operated drones could satisfy our demand for instant delivery in less than 15 minutes while easing traffic congestion, improving safety and helping the environment. Because in the future, you won't drive. You won't even, most likely, you won't be able to either one, afford it, or two, uh, be able to even drive yourself because of the safety laws that protect you will also keep you enslaved by a computer or a self driven car. Uh, as far as this goes, this works hand in hand with the metaverse. Just like I said, you go into a virtual Walmart and again, watch, they'll do something to where you can't physically go to Walmart without something or if even if it's uh, with that something, maybe they have shut down physical stores because so many people are shopping on Metaverse. Maybe so many big box retailers have gone virtual that it's just a warehouse and if anything, they'll have a walk up window or something. So again, you may have these drones coming to your door after going to the metaverse. You may think, I don't like video games. Well, it won't be video games anymore. It will be going to the store in the metaverse. And some may think, oh, you're giving this thing too much credit. It is happening and it, it, it they're set up. Look at the patents they're filing. It's happening. Uh, so I, I would highly recommend looking into what it is because it is our future if we even have a future. U.S. locks down all federal prisons after two MS-13 gang members are perished in Texas. This is pretty fun funky, I, I have to say. U.S. locks down all federal prisons after two MS-13 members were killed in Texas. It says the federal prison system has been placed on a nationwide lockdown after two inmates were taken down and two others were injured Monday during a gang altercation at a federal penitentiary in Texas. Two inmates, Andrew Paneda, uh, 34, and Guillermo Rojas, uh, 54, were pronounced dead at the local hospital after the attack. The incident happened around 11.30 a.m. Monday at USP Beaumont. Uh, it says a federal pres uh, 
Prison in Beaumont, Texas. The Bureau of Prison said officers at, at the Texas prison observed multiple inmates fighting and responded to secure the area. The altercation involved members of the violent MS-13 street gang. Two people familiar with the matter told the Associated Press. The people could not discuss an ongoing investigation and spoke uh, to the AP for, on condition of anonymity. So, now, uh, again, this sounds like these were big-time dudes. Otherwise, I don't think they would lock down uh, every prison. Uh, something m may have just gone down as far as... They, they say that Rojas was involved in stabbings at a federal penitentiary in Pennsylvania in 1996 and a federal penitentiary in Colorado in 2007. Paneda was described in court documents as a member of a prison gang known as the Mafia. Well, an inmate in the Los Angeles County Jail in 2015, Paneda uh, carried out orders to assault inmates who disrespected the gang. Monday's attack is just the latest example of serious violence within the be beleaguered uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons. So, again, it says the lockdown being instituted at the agency's more than 120 federal prisons across the U.S. was prompted by fears of potential retaliation and concerned violence could spread to other facilities. It sounds like these guys were higher ranking members or something just happened like a mafia versus mafia or gang versus gang. And these guys were very important. They were high ranking officials, uh, you know, I guess officials or, or members. And then one gets locked down. They send out an order prison wide. You know what this should tell people is that one prison is uber connected. Doesn't matter if they're in solitary confinement. Uh, they have whole systems one thing that I don't understand is like when you see shows like, you know, 60 Days In or something, it's like you see all of these things that go on in actual prison and it's like they still have not fixed them. It's a very corrupt system. Uh, essentially, you can get anything in prison as long as you have money. And the cartels and the Mexican mafia, they have money. So it's like they can they can set hits and things like this outside of the prison from inside a jail it's pretty absurd i mean it's not as uh, absurd as being like you know on night <clears throat> watch uh in a new york jail and you know taking yourself out even though they're literally watching your every move and then just disappearing right but you know there's it's pretty absurd and as far as this goes, uh, who knows? This could cause all of them to go off. Maybe this was set up. Maybe CIA was involved. And I only say that because uh, the uh, MS-13, all these gangs, they have uh, they have worked side by side or, you know, kind of with these agencies in the history of the United States as far as all the weapons and drugs that move in and out. If you know your history and if you know some of the declassified stuff that has happened, there's some pretty funky stuff going on. Uh, they have armed whole villages and cities and things like this uh, as part of their proxies. Uh, we've done a lot of really crappy stuff. What's funny is we always look at places like China or Russia or other places and we say they're so horrible. Um, they're just horrible more publicly. And that's nothing to say down on America. You can be proud of where you're from and not be proud of what your government does. Uh, again, it's run by many different uh, factions, corrupt and not. So, what do you think of this? Let me know in the comments down below. AI, thank you for subscribing. Sopranos fan, too. Thank you for subscribing as well. Bible Talk for Common People, again, thank you for the massive support. Everyone remember, Neo isn't in Greek alphabet. It means new one. If it takes 33%, it might just be what gets the blame, but really, it's the scorpion sting playing out. So, the new one or the new O, again, that's a bat thing. It's still not uh, to people. Um, there is a lot of fear going on, uh, I, I know, uh, but I, I told the Dex the same thing yesterday. It's like the reason why that's such a big deal, even though uh, it is you know, not two humans yet, the, the Neo OV, is because, one, where it's coming from, two, uh, how much it's been placed on the internet, which makes me suspicious as far as, you know, could that be part of the million man strong, uh, you know, Chinese army trying to cause fear and, and propaganda? I don't know. Uh, but also, and again, the, the, the government actually pays over a million on their payroll 
to be online and just be fake people. Uh, so, you know, is that part of it? And then where it comes from everything else is that, or is that our propaganda to make us hate somebody else or get us prepared uh, to, to do experience things? Most people see that and they go, oh, okay, they're telling us beforehand, like, oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to go to humans. This is going to have zoonotic propensity. So pretty freaky stuff. Lon Mundus, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much, and nice to have you here. And then over on D Live, I want to thank a few people. Thank you so much, uh, Mary XX, Skyhouse, Jammer One. Thank you for modding, uh, Gem Gem Cloud, Pharrell, really, really, uh, Tugi, Josh eighty one S, Sean eighty. Thank you for following. And then of course uh, Leslie eight one seven, Canyon Hiker. Uh, Newer name, I believe. Uh, Patty Morton, thank you. Led Dispenser, thank you so much. Release a Quacken. And uh, again, thank you, Angela1609. Thanks, everybody that's supporting over there. The DLive, DLove family. And then Uri Geller. We talked about this. I mentioned this the other night. Uh, but this is kind of the official thing. Now, uh, I mentioned this, and a lot of people uh, said that they, you know, that this freaks them out. And... Personally, when I first saw this, I thought, uh, I thought, I was like, well, who cares what this guy says? He's he's a TV psychic. Um, there, I guess the reason why so many people are paying attention is because he's had a few things in the past that have happened. Uh, but just so you know, and just so you're caught up on what people are talking about at the water coolers, uh, this this guy Ur, Uri or Yuri Geller uh, warns NASA to prepare for an alien invasion and new prediction. And essentially, uh, it says that Spoonbender Yuri has predicted that there will be a mass landing after scientists found a huge energy energy source for uh, four thousand lights away, uh, light years away. It says the seventy five year old believes humans may have stumbled upon the chit chat of superior beings from outer space, and self proclaimed psychic thinks it means that aliens are heading our way. It says, quote, uh, a team mapping radio waves in the universe has discovered something unusual and it releases a giant burst of energy three times an hour and it's unlike anything astronomers have seen before. No doubt in my mind that this is connected to alien intelligence way, way superior than ours. It says, quote, start deciphering their messages. They are preparing us for a mass landing soon. Hashtag NASA, Hoover, Spectra, Spectra, aliens. So... One th one thing, so I have never really believed in the TV psychics. I remember when I was a kid, they used to have those 800 uh, lines, like California psychics and things. And I'm not trying to um, put down anybody that used to call them. And I'm sure we have some that probably called them every day. They were 1-900 numbers that cost an arm and a leg. You would talk to a psychic and uh, it was run by that uh, Cleo lady or, or one of them was. Uh, they had Cleo and all of the, you know, Miss Cleo, let me tell your future. You'd call that and everything else. I got a bad taste in my mouth. My mom called that and I just thought, she, I even when I was a kid, I was like, she's getting ripped off. Uh, that's how I felt. And I remember her talking on speakerphone on our like old school phone with, with speaker. And, and it was like the lady was just saying very obvious things. And I was a kid and I could tell that. Uh, my mom, again, you know, uh, just, you know, kind of bought into it, uh, especially when it was like if she was a, in a breakup or something like that. When when people were vulnerable or they're hurt, they go to somebody else and, and there's a lot of scam artists out there that know how to kind of grab a vulnerable person and then uh, make them, you know, feel like they're better or tell them it's all going to be okay. Really, most of us just need somebody to say it's okay and then, you know, <laughs> we'll feel better. We just need a mommy or daddy to comfort us and say, hey, you're going to be okay. In a lot of ways, the psychics, you know, would comfort people. Um, in a way, you could say it was a good thing. But again, these these people, I, I kind of put in the same bag as as the really bad TV evangel uh, evangelist. Um, which again, there, there are some bad ones that were super corrupt and got caught over the years doing horrible things. So... I would, I guess, I take this with a grain of salt. What do you think? Do you think, uh, do you think that TV psychics are real if they make it to TV and they stay on TV, or if they are anything like that? Uh, do you think that they're real, or do you think if there is psychics, then they wouldn't be on TV? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And then remember, you can call in at two two four four zero zero Marf. 
Again, that is 2244006273. Uh, I just want to mention real quick, uh, there were several Apache and Blackhawk helicopters uh, flying over us just a few hours ago and then this morning. Really crazy stuff. So um, I actually sent screenshots to uh, Dex. Dex, um, I don't know if we don't really need them. We can maybe put them up on the, the end of the show. But what I thought was interesting is they were flying really erratic. And then a ton of Coast Guard helicopters on the coast, as always. I mean, they're Coast Guard. But I saw way more than usual. I watched Flight Radar. And then, uh, of course, these Blackhawks and Apaches were... Uh, assisting and following this other plane and there was no uh, available information other than the kind of plane it was there was a military plane and then a strato tanker which are those big uh, huge huge military planes uh, I believe they ended up landing at uh, uh, one of our local military bases but the helicopters were like accompanying it um, and this was just it, and then we saw six helicopters yesterday that were not on flight radar so my question to you, some of you that are military and uh, ex-military, because I'm not an expert on this, how, how, what do they have to do to be allowed to not list those flights? Do they have to have a classified, um, d does that mission or whatever they're doing, does that have to be classified for them not to show up on uh, flight radar? And then why does some show up there and why do some not? Is that because they are classified operations? Is it because they're drills that are quiet? You know, put it in the chat below if you if you uh, if you know. Again, uh, six Apache helicopters, not Blackhawks, Apaches, the really mean ones. And then today there was one Apache and oh, at least one Apache, uh, and then I think two Blackhawks that were accompanying the the Strato tanker was this right here, and then. Um, I forget what kind of uh, military plane it was. But yeah, and it's like, why so much action right now if nothing is going on? That's that's what I have, a que I have questions about. All right, and then it looks like uh, Angie Zupaga. I got pics and videos of them too. Let's see here. Hold on. Nothing showed up on uh, radar. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so by the way, I told you, I think I told you last night. Uh, me and my buddy Nick uh, w ran into, uh, we were following each other in this just convoy of uh, generators and Humvees. I've been seeing so many lately, it's absolutely insane. And then uh, my friend Nick told me that there's actual, he's seen them multiple times, but usually not on a truck. So I, I it's just like everybody is, they're moving stuff all over the place. And when you see those like house-sized generators, you know, what the heck are they doing with all of these? Where are they putting them all? And they're just, they're going northeast, southwest. I mean, it, there's no rhyme or reason. It's not just between bases, which, you know, that's normal. But we're talking about going to the coast, going in, going everywhere. And we have so many people tweeting and DMing, DMing this stuff. It's like, what the heck is going on? There may be drills and training going on. Rebecca Snavely, there are always drills and training. But I'm talking about this is like to another level. And I, I've, we follow all the training. We actually have some more to an, announce tonight, I believe. Uh, but yeah, this is like, this is prep for war. Uh, I, I, that's what I think. Yep, seeing generators on semis, says Patty Morton. Uh, Earth Angel, what's going on? Jams out. Uh, also, that helicopter that crashed recently was darked out, and it was Navy, but it was not visible. They made it look plain. Crashed in California, I think. Someone has to, says, low and loud. There's a video of a lone jet on my YouTube channel. I'll check it out. And then, uh, yeah, just tons. If they fly above 18,000 feet, they have to have radar. Well, I would think that most of these Apaches are... Well, the ones that I got were at 5,000, 4,000, 6,000. So, but they did have radar. The ones that didn't, uh, they were very low. They show up af uh, on or after the conflict. Crazy stuff. Maybe some kind of mass event in February. Well, maybe like conflict. I don't know. There's lots of conflicting stuff. We'll we'll talk about that tonight. We're going to get into that in here in just a minute. 
first off, though, I do want to remind you. Okay, so this whole show is powered by energy now. Uh, if you did not know that, uh, by the way, so this solar generator is flipping awesome. Uh, this is one of the most sought-after generators out there. Uh, we were very lucky that they happened to do work with EMP. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have uh, ever been able to get this as an affiliate. Uh, these are a great company. It's an amazing, amazing product, but it is a modular generator. Uh, essentially, if you've ever heard of the battery walls, uh, this is modular so you can stack multiple batteries. Uh, you can, you you know, go six high. They have a plug-in. They're the same on the top and the bottom. So you can basically stack them as high as you want and add more battery life. Now, just the base station with a uh, the Flex 1500 with the battery uh, is an amazing, amazing thing by itself. Uh, this whole show, including, uh, I want to say, two, well, two power bars, each have about eight things plugged in, uh, runs entirely off this and my router. So, I mean, all of my lights, everything is run off of this now. Uh, part of the reason why uh, that I am getting solar is because they are quiet. So, one thing I noticed when all of the power went out here is that all of the neighbors, when it was snowy, one, it was absolutely silent because silent of the snow, but you could hear every single person with a gas-powered generator. Now, this thing has amazing quick charge as far as you can plug in. Not only you can charge it from the wall, but you can also charge it uh, from solar panels. You can even get modular uh, pieces that fit in that can even charge it faster. You can plug in multiple solar panels. And then if you don't if uh, you don't have enough plugged in, you can even get another modular and plug in more. Uh, it has uh, low voltage appliances that you can get with it uh, that can run for a very, very, very long time uh, off of this. You can get all sorts of accessories. It's really, really amazing. Uh, if you've been looking to get these, uh, there there is a bit of a wait. So you want to get in on, as soon as you can. Uh, marfuglenews.com slash energy. I would highly recommend getting them uh, before you need them. Again, there's actually... Uh, I was talking to my friend Nick. He has a CPAP. He, he has an emergency if his power goes out. Essentially, he can't go to sleep without it. His neck collapses on him. Uh, anyone that, you know, is a bodybuilder that has uh, very, you know, big big necks and things, uh, I guess a huge percentage of bodybuilders have, have to have CPAP because their neck collapses. If something like that and their power goes out, it's actually a very dangerous situation. So even my friend Nick was talking about, you know, getting something like this just in case. So again, make sure to go check it out. I believe in this, uh, and so does everybody else. It is one of the most sought-after uh, generators out there, yet last year going into this year. So pretty amazing. Make sure to go check it out. That's marfuglenews.com slash I-N-E-R-G-Y. You can also go to the first link in the description to find all of our affiliates over on the right side. All right, and then... Uh, Dex, the phone system uh, looks like we have Bob, and uh, he wants to tell us what to look for before a major conflict, Navy Maritime pre-positioning ships, and we've got a link here. Uh, let's get Bob in, and if you want to call in, 2244-00-MARF, the back end is open. Uh, thank you, Gone Girl 777 for your support over on PayPal. Hey, Adam and Dex, mods and wives, prayer requests don't want to put details okay it's just really bad please pray for sister kim thank you fugle fam so okay so gone girl wants us to play, pray for sister kim uh absolutely done and done uh ljp thank you and then bible talk for common peeps thank you so much all right dex let's get uh, uh bob is live adam all right bob you are live on marfugal news how are you doing tonight oh, i'm doing okay so what am I uh, pulling up here? Um, if it's about the uh, fleets that are around the world that we have pre-positioned, uh, when I was back in the service back in the late 80s and early 90s, it's, uh, it's a way that people can kind of tell that something's going down. If those fleets leave port, they're going somewhere. Well, and and we've seen the uh, the webcams on the east and the west coast. Uh, there are publicly available webcams that uh, there are groups that are actually tracking that. They take photos and they uh, take photos from these publicly available ports, 
And on the 18th and 19th of last month, on January, about 12 days ago, all of these amphibious ships, uh, they had more leaving uh, than in the previous months. I mean, it was months back since you've seen that much action. Uh, what do you think is going on here? Well, if those ships are leaving the ports, okay, each one of those ships has the ability to s supply and serve a brigade of Marines, Army, whomever, equipment, ammunition, you name it, for 30 days, each ship. So if those ships are leaving and heading, say, to Europe or to the uh, to the Asia, watch where those ships go, because that is a quick, rapid de deployment. During the 90s, when Shield and Storm happened, those are what supplied the initial forces. So, and it is it it's a it's a quick quick thing that will happen. They will take people out of off bases and fly them to wherever those ports are and get them shipped unloaded. And basically, each one of those ships have just not basic ammunition and stuff. We're talking tanks, tracks, vehicles water tanks, fuel tanks, whatever it needs, it has on that ship. So these are the supply. These are basically, uh, th this isn't just the, the resupply. This is the, the resupply plus reinforcements, plus gear, plus tanks, plus everything. Yeah, pretty now, much. Now, uh, and where I'll are these now? During the first Gulf war, um, those are positioned in in the Indian Ocean, out west and out east. And those bad boys, you see them take off, something is going down. Because they don't just leave to float out in the middle of nowhere for nothing. They've got civilians on them, and the military will literally go on them ships to unload them and take that gear to wherever it needs to be gone, gone to. Now, I, I see the USNS Palau. Uh, you can actually see in the picture it has this huge fold-up ramp that essentially they can roll off. Uh, this thing probably drops down. Like I mean, This is the this is bigger than some uh, cities have bridges. I mean, this thing is probably 150 yeah. feet long. No, long, bigger than that. Yeah. Well, when the golf went down, when... Uh, the individual from Iraq, or wherever you want to call it, decided to invade. They locked us down on Pendleton. They sent us to March Air Force Base. They flew us out to Diego Garcia and different places, and we got aboard those ships. And when they landed in Jabal, Saudi Arabia, we unloaded them quickly. We supplied the army that was behind us when we landed. And I'm telling you, that's got enough mobilization and enough equipment, like I say, to supply one of those ships to supply a complete brigade for 30 days. Food, water, you name it, it's on it. Now, is there any way that the public will know when these take off, or is it just for the people that live near this? They look out the window and they say, hey, those are leaving. They don't just, you know, spend a billion dollars to ship these things out. Yeah, these, these ships stick out like you can see from the pictures. I'm watching you on TV right now. You can see how those ships stick out. They People around those areas, like I say, there's two areas in the East Coast. There was two areas in the West Coast and then uh, Diego Garcia. Those ships, when you see them pull out, something is going down because those are getting pre-positioned for something. They just don't do it for chuckles and grin. Uh, Dex, can you, there's four ships here, the CA, the Palau, Sizzler, Dahl. Maybe by the end of the show we can just figure out if, if publicly we can see where these things uh, may be, if there's the webcams. I just wonder if these are the same port that the, the webcams cover. Somebody, you know, uh, people are going to say, well, oh, you're, you're going to let the enemy know. 
uh, the enemy. What? Well, you're you're ex-military. Sounds like. Uh, do you think that? Import, yeah. Do you think that uh, by telling you know showing a webcam or something? First of all, do you think that China and Russia know exactly where our ships are most all, almost all the time? If they got satellites up in the up in the space, they're gonna know. They're gonna know. I mean, we know enough about them. Let's be for real. Technology is kind of how everything's gone in the last 20, 30 years. There's been a lot of catching up done by those powers to be. They are going to know if our, they watch our fleets, they watch our ports. We well, do the same thing to them. Well, let me ask you They're this. They're going to know. So recently we covered uh, just about a week ago that several of our nuclear submarines popped up for a very rare uh, public appearance. They popped up just, you know, in the middle of nowhere. They'll just pop up. Uh, several places spotted these things, and it, it wasn't for them, you know, going into port. It was just they popped up these random places. You think that that is because they purposely did that so China or Russia would see them and say, oh, okay, you've got them all over the place. Do you think that that's why? And again, that's – because they didn't, they don't need to call them and say, "Hey, look what we have." They just pop up, and China and Russia are watching. They'll go there. They are. Back in my day, uh, the nuclear thing about with the not Russia now, but the old Soviet Union was mass destruction. Blah blah blah. A show of force. A show of what you have. That's basically what it is. And. You know, I pray nothing happens. I really do, because it's that's never something to wish upon a generation. We just got out of, well, about six months ago, we got out of the sandbox and look at what happened getting out of the sandbox with all those young people losing their lives. Was that right? No. Well, did you, did you ever uh, have a thought in your head on how fast they pulled out of there? that maybe there was something going on? Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, when the golf went down, I was also in Somalia with Restore Hope. I remember how things were going on. And when the individuals that, the civilians that are in charge of the military, when they put their two cents into things, it kind of messes with the military chain of command and how things operate. And I can remember Somalia. We had to, we were, we were putting our equipment back on ship and we literally had, and you gotta understand me being an old Marine, we had army trying to stop us from stopping a riot at the port where we were, we were getting our equipment back on ship. And we literally, I, I had to tell the army major, basically, you're not my chain of command. Get the hell out of my way. And I had two squads of Marines in a truck, and we had to go squash the the riot at the front of the port so we could get stuff in and out of there. It was, you know, these politicians, you can't trust them. You really can't. Not when it comes to the military. I am... It's this whole thing with the politicalization of the military lately. It's just pitiful. Well, just so you know, uh, I know a lot of military, and they say that what the public sees is that the top military brass are doing all of these things that, you know, most people that are traditional military would go, what are you doing? Uh, but they say that it doesn't carry yep. down, that our military is still strong, and it is still... Uh, oh, yeah. A lot. I mean, it's it. It really hasn't changed. There's a couple things that they're required to do, but they're not. It's not. It's the, still the same. It's still the same feel. It's. It's. Oh, yeah. You know, when you go, it, it's the same. Uh, but they they want to make it oh. look like they're doing all of this stuff, but really nobody is really doing it on the lower end of it. Or if they are, it's just. Oh, yeah. you know, They might be saying a, a single a certain oh. word before somebody's name. But that's about it, or or something like that, you know, along those well, lines. When I got out of the service back in '93, um, and I was still over in Somalia when my telling my time in, um, when a certain individual got 
put into office. He um, he changed the rules of engagement within 48 hours of him taking the oath. Bill? Okay. And you're right, Mike. You're, yeah, we'll say Slick Willie. Um, if that ain't going to get you in trouble. Yeah, that's um, great. The thing is, is your leadership at your base, your base level, not just your not enlisted, but your base officers up to probably a major or lieutenant colonel, they will use common sense and the military values that you were taught to lead their people because it's them and the people below them that get the stuff done. And that's one thing that has never really changed. I mean, it hasn't changed from probably World War One or before to now. Your your lower command and your lower echelons always are the ones that do the most. And your higher commands, your generals, your whatever, they're they're just talking points. So I have one more question for you, or may, possibly two. So one, yeah, do you think from your experience and from, say, the the retired vets that you may know, uh, do you think that we are about to go into a, a massive war? Do you think it's going to be a proxy? Do you think there's nothing? nothing's going to happen? What do you think? There is a lot of questions on that, and there's a lot – a lot of hope that it isn't what it seems to be by the ma- by media, but honestly, it, it's you we're playing with fire going over into Europe. We are not set up to go over into Europe and play a proxy war. We are not. We can send the Air Force and everything else, but that it takes a lot of uh, logistics to do something like that. And I don't think that these people running the shows in Washington or Clownville, whatever you want to call it, actually have a clue on what the hell they're doing. I really don't. A lot of of, of us older vets don't want to see this younger generation go through that. They, they've they never really – they got the training to, ta- to do the job, but you've got to understand a lot of us older vets were actually – that was – I hate to say it in this way. The USSR are, were our enemy. That was the bad guy. We were trained to deal with that. We were trained on their tactics and everything. In the last 30 years, what have we done? We've been in the desert messing with one sandbox and another. We haven't, the training is there, but it isn't to the conflict. It isn't to the European model. And that's one thing that personally, I don't want to see it happen, and I fear it. Well, I think we all do, and uh, I I really hope that I am completely wrong, and I I will take all the licks I'll get if I'm wrong about we are close. Uh, the other angle of it is people say, oh, it's all propaganda. They're trying to make us fear and say that it's conflict. I know that eventually it will not be fear and propaganda, or it will even be set up and – uh, what's funny is we're covering in, uh, well, I don't know if we have it tonight, but Ukraine is even saying that both Russia and the U S uh, they, they basically, uh, Ukrainians are saying, uh, that Russia and U S are trying to, you know, basically make a war, uh, that, that they're both doing yeah. it. And it's, they almost, some think that they're even doing it together, that they'll, they'll just knock out, uh, millions of people over something and, and after it's all uh, settled, we'll have a different kind of world, a world that's under less uh, different commands, say, you know, like one. Yeah. No, I, I, I somewhat agree with you on that. I kind of wonder if it, if something goofy is going on <laughs> and people don't understand that, you know, a lot of younger people and I, don't get me wrong saying this. I'm in my fifties, but a lot of younger people don't understand that there's people out there that really don't care about the human civilization or human beings. They care about greed, power, and money. That's all they care about. Absolutely. And it's sad. Absolutely. 
Well, uh, Bob, it was nice to have you call in and thank you for your service. I salute to you, and I oh, really, you. I really appreciate uh, you putting in the years, and and thank you so much. Oh, well, maybe one, maybe one of these days. I uh, since I talked to you last, I've actually done something to kind of help out the veteran community. Is I've been making, uh, I have an old barn that I've been taking down, and I actually been making. Of course, my Marine Corps symbol, the Eagle Globe and Anchor, and uh, the other one is the Fallen out of old barn board. Maybe one of these days, if you and Dex want something for, like, your little studio, I'd be willing to send it out to you in Washington State. Uh, it's basically something that's about two by two, and it's red, white, and blue, and it shows our colors and who we are. See if I can do this without destroying. I just want to let you know I keep every single piece of art uh, that is sent. I wouldn't send it yet, but uh, um, but yeah, I'm. There was a mishap at my uh, PO box, but this is actually made out of. I love this thing. This is made by somebody who now doesn't even watch. I don't believe, but yeah, this thing was really beautiful. I still appreciate it, even though uh, the person that made it just kind of. I don't know why they just stopped stopped doing what they were doing but yeah but yeah i would love one believe it or not that sounds really cool in my case it helped in my case this uh, this sound probably will sound weird to you but i actually have ptsd that i suffer with and it helps me um take the negative and create something positive and that's why i do it i've given since the thing in the about six months ago happened. I've been giving them out to different veterans and different families. And I, I don't charge them for it. I just give it to them because it shows that we still care. And that's important. Well, we, there's a lot of people that do care for you, Bob, and for all the other vets that essentially gave their lives or gave parts of their lives or huge parts of their lives uh, for you know, sometimes a cause that they couldn't really even agree with, but they did it because they sacrificed and that's for my freedom and your freedom and everyone else's. Well, so thank you again for your service. And Bob, it was nice talking to you again. I can't wait to talk to you again. Don't be a stranger. Well, okay. And thank you uh, for the, the tip on the maritime prepositioning force. All right. Take care, guy. All right. Bye, Bob. That was Bob, uh, <clears throat> ex-Marine. Great call. Again, um, I think it's really amazing what he's doing with the uh, Marine symbol made out of barnwood. That sounds freaking sweet. Uh, just so you know, Bob, I would put that up in the studio behind me. Like everything else, I, I'm within reach of probably about eight people's arts. Uh, including, uh, I love Jay Stone's uh, piece, the the Mafia. Uh, I love all of the art that I've gotten. Uh, and then, I, I want to do when we when we eventually change the studio up. I want to put it all on the back. I want to make a different studio that's more visible. So if if you did miss that call, because I know that about four hundred joined us, uh, about almost close to forty seven hundred now. Uh, what was what Bob was saying is that the maritime prepositioning forces, these huge cargo ships that actually have these 200 foot, 150 foot uh, drawbridges, they have tanks, gas, supplies, fuel, missiles, ammunition, everything. Uh, these are the ships. So he said when these when these go out, it's no joke. Like even uh, I, I don't even think I've never even heard of any of these going out as part of a drill. Uh, they may. But I, I would think that it would be a like they don't they almost don't need to. They could almost replace that with any other kind of boat unless they're actually going to do the logistical unloading of it. Uh, you know, they could, in theory, put another ship in its place as kind of a a cheaper way to do it and practice like you are taking that boat. I don't know if they do that, but again, uh, these boats are gigantic and they are slow. 
Uh, and like he said, they hold plus 30 days plus of stuff. And when they go out, that's what you got to look out for. And I, I believe him. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to be looking into these four and see if there's, see if it's public. Are they in port? Did they leave already? Do we even know that? Can we know that? All right, and then Dex. Uh, I, I want to go into Russian Navy holds anti-submarine drills in the Norwegian Sea. It's it's just like, it, it's crazy because I believe this is the same sea where they had their submarine detector dragged and destroyed. I'm pretty sure. I may be wrong if somebody wants to correct me. Um, outside yeah, the, of the UK ship that had the detector behind it that got dragged and broke off of the ship. No, 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 no. Uh, no, this was a separate one where it was a submarine slash sonar detector for uh, off of the coast of Norway and it something happened. It was dragged and destroyed. This was be yeah, yeah. before the HMS. Yeah, that, no, no, that's what I'm talking about. I, 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 that's the one I'm talking about. It was up behind the ship and it's like the sub detector and they think the sub actually hit it and broke it. No, I think they're two different separate things. Because the the HMS said that they that the they had a sub detector hanging off their boat, correct? Yeah, that's the one I'm I'm thinking of. Okay, and the, the it got one, it got destroyed. But anyway, yeah, the one but I'm yeah, thinking they're of. They're on. They're now. You know, every time they move equipment, it's oh, there's another drill, right? So they're obviously putting more more vessels, and in particular, this fleet is you know they're calling it anti-submarine drills, right? Uh, but they're certainly in that uh, Norwegian sea. Exactly. So where where they're actually located matters most. Um, I, I will try to find what I was talking about, but it is a permanent structure that's always in Norway uh, that they have. And it is more of a system for sonar. But what ends up happening is it ends up catching submarines that go through. So it acts as an uh, it, it has multiple purposes. We covered it probably about a month before the HMS incident. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember what uh, what that was called. Or if anybody in the audience knows exactly what I'm talking about, make sure to put it in there. I know that you guys are closely uh, watching our show and you are just on top, of, just as much as top on top of this uh, as we are. James Fox, thank you for your support. John Ward, thank you for subscribing. James Fox, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tanya Vargas, I appreciate that. Um, multiple people just popped in. Thank you so much. Patricia Rivas. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Everybody that supports, um, everybody that supports the show really appreciate you. Uh, best news in the Pacific Northwest. Who is that? Oh, thank you. Um, love, Mo love mob prepper nurse. He is 300 away from a hundred K no flipping way. Okay. Challenge accepted. Uh, Marie Shelvin, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your support and the super sticker. Thank you for supporting Independent. We Again, we don't have, we, we have you guys. Uh, Patricia Rivas, again, thank you for the super sticker. Uh, Bible Talk for Common People, again, thank you. Says, Dax, go to my channel and watch the last two videos. It's something nobody is talking about. I will go check it out. Bible Talk for Common People. Anna McLean, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And then Urban, uh, Urban Bobber, thank you so much. I appreciate your support as well. Uh, Tristan Early, again, thank you. Uh, let's see. So let's just do that real quick. Um, so this is a big deal. Uh, 300 away from 100K. I know that Prepper Nurse has been working his butt off. He talks about all sorts of scenarios. He talks about prepping scenarios. He is truly off-grid. In fact, you know, he basically... He left his old life behind to be off grid. He left, uh, you know, he he got rid of like a regular life doing the nine to five uh, to be off grid, to do his own farm, to do everything. Uh, he shows all of his chickens. He shows uh, how he does it, uh, how he lives. Uh, he goes through anybody that watches his show knows uh, that he puts a lot of work into off grid. Uh, he's he's completely self-sufficient. Uh, the guy is a really, really nice guy. He's just a genuine, he looks like a biker, uh, but he's also incredibly knowledgeable. Uh, he was a former nurse. You guys got to go check him out. 
And he hit it. No way. I wonder if uh, I wonder if he was already there or what. So you guys get him to 105. Get him to 110. Sometimes this updates and then it will take away. You know what YouTube told us is uh, that the next couple days we will notice a a big decrease in subscribers because they're getting rid of spam. Uh, I they they do it pretty much every time uh, things are going well. So. Oh man, four hours ago we did it. A hundred thousand th subs. Thank you. Congratulations to Prepperners. Will you guys please go over there? Make sure to say Marfia sent you. Uh, make sure to just pump him up and say congratulations. I'm gonna be going and do. I know he really worked hard for this. Um, he has been talking about this for at least a year, and uh, I know that he will be doing something. I remember ta even talking to him about. Um, how he said at a hundred thousand he was going to give something away and and the the reason why is he he said other channels he couldn't believe they didn't do that um he was my inspiration for giving away the bags for the two hundred thousand because it is true like it's a reward back to the audience because you have been so loyal to us so i just want to say congrats like this is a big deal uh, this is the plaque. This is, I mean, this, it's, it's silly, but we put so much work into this. It, that's really amazing. Fool fam is behind you. Magic prepper is there. Looks like real freedoms. Other people are down there. Saying congrats. That was nice of Magic. All right. So uh, we got to fly through some of this. We are behind. State Department tells family members of government employees to leave Belarus. So this is further evidence that it, it is going down. Lisa K23, snow coming. Hope you all are well. DFW Jackie, thank you. When they say peace, conflict is at hand. Exactly. Um, so... As far as we showed you Ukraine, we know from our Fugel family and people that are actually employed in Russia, uh, American citizens were told by the American embassy to leave Russia. We know that they have recently just placed an extremely specific uh, do not travel to Russia uh, on the official warning. And it's, it's basically saying American citizens do not fly. UK citizens do not fly. Uh, Australian citizens, uh, European citizens, citizens do not fly uh, to Russia. It is a do not travel on the advisory board. And that is specifically because of what is going on. So they're telling people and they're secretly evacuating. Uh, the front villages in Ukraine are evacuating. We're going to show you that here in a second. So uh, our entire military is out in both oceans in the South China Sea. We've got multiple carrier strike groups. Uh, we also have, of course, multiple carrier strike groups over in, in the area of Ukraine. So stuff is going down right now. Obviously, this is another sign. The B administration has ordered family members of U.S. government employees to leave Belarus. We're getting close, people. That should, I mean, that this, it's not just one place. It's all of them. And they're saying, get out. I got chills when I read this the first time. This was a quote. U.S. citizens located in or considering to travel to Belarus should be aware that the situation is unpredictable and there is heightened tension in the region. The travel advisory says the U.S. government's ability to provide routine or emergency service to U.S. citizens in Belarus is already severely limited to Belarusian government limitations on U.S. embassy staffing. White House Press Secretary Jan Psaki told reporters that Russians were surging troops into Belarus. Psaki said that nearly 5,000 Russian soldiers were positioned in the country, with more expected in the coming weeks. Again, Belarus, portions of, of which border Russia and Ukraine, is now under a level four do not travel. So that is one more to the do not travel list. <clears throat> this is one of the same things 
they say on the Russia, it says potential harassment targeted specifically at foreigners is also possible. Given the heightened volatility of the situation, U.S. citizens are strongly advised against traveling to Belarus. Do not travel. And another flotilla of Russian warships is about to enter the English Channel. People, wake up. This is it. This is what we have cried wolf about for all of these years. I think it's finally here. That's my opinion. Again, I think that we are here. This is why I am this is why I'm taking I'm taking my you know last steps. Like I I seriously think about it all the time. Like all of a sudden it's down to the wire. So make sure to thank your mods for going down there and and keeping it peaceful down there. You have a lot of new people in there and again not everybody's going to know the rules. Remember, if you are muted or anything like that, it is not personal. We have some odd rules. Like, we don't talk badly about other creators here. So make sure to uh, to understand that it's not personal. It just happens. And then you get let back in after five minutes. Don't take offense. Nobody's going to judge you for it. Everybody's had it happen. So another flotilla of warships is about to enter the English Channel. We covered the six amphibious ones. Then the next day, they uh, deployed 140 warships. They sent 250 trains full of troops into uh, different cities across. Uh, the UK has now deployed across Europe, officially uh, announced deploying to all over Europe. Uh, the U.S. has now announced that they are deploying, and most Americans here do not even know that we are over there. Most Americans do not even know that we have an issue with Russia. Most Americans don't even know that we are over in the South China Sea. Why? Why is media so quiet on this? And you may I saw the stuff on the news. If you saw it on the news, that's because you are watching very closely. Uh... Because the majority of people, they are making sure that this is not being talked about in social circles. It is not being pushed up to the very top of Twitter uh, every 15 minutes. This is being pushed down. And what's being pushed up is a bunch of distractions. Um, there are a couple legitimate things we'll talk about at the end of the show that are a good thing that people are talking about. But again, they're done with the CV and now they're on this. They have to fix. Every country just made a cash grab. All the leaders are hated. People have protested around the planet. And now they just need to put you back into fear mode. Uh, there's nothing that fixes, uh, fixes uh, I guess, um, there's nothing that fixes uh, a disaster of a, a, a situation like a war. Look at history. Look at what has happened. This is not good. A group of Navy warships from that service's northern fleet is poised to enter the English Channel ahead of their planned participation in a controversial series of live fire drills scheduled off the southwest coast of Ireland. The vessels centered around three warships will not be uh, the first from the Russian Navy to pass through the channel in recent weeks, having been preceded by the six amphibious warfare ships that left the Baltic Sea. It says, as well as a pair of uh, Steroguchi class corvettes from the Baltic fleet that apparently entered the Atlantic via, via the channel today. Nobody even knew that they were there, and boom. Corvettes, boom. Publicly available maritime tracking data shows the position of one of the Northern Fleet support vessels in the latest flotilla. The ship in question being the replenishment oiler, Vaizyama, uh, which has its automatic identification system transponder on, and as of today, was underway in the North Sea off the east coast of England, apparently preparing to enter the channel. So I, I want people to realize the, the ships that we talked about with our maritime uh, pre-position force, those same kind of ships are some of the ships that they are sending out. Uh, Russia. So I don't know where ours are because I don't know if our transponders are on or where. Uh, I'm going to check that. Like after this show, I'm, I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking uh, those four shows. 
In fact, uh, this this right here, these these four ships, I'm going to be checking and seeing if if there's publicly available information. I'll have an update for you on that in a few minutes. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dex. I I know you're doing the phones tonight, so I didn't want to ask you to do that. And then Bones, you know you don't have to do that. Make sure to go check out Bones' channel. He's one of our mods, but he's also a, an incredible person. Uh, B O N E Z. He got that channel. What a great uh, great channel name again go over to bones and say hi uh you know you don't have to do that thank you and bones is also one of our longest time mods along with uh again uh, pretty much all of the mods have been around for over three years bible talk for common people i've already picked out what neighbors i'm going to eat when my supplies run out <laughs> oh that's horrible <laughs> i usually you know pull it out of a hat <laughs> You pick them out. That's just horrendous. All right. And then uh, Boom Shelters, Guerrilla Warfare, Building Ukraine's Resistance. So before we hit that, I do want to remind you right now, uh, you can actually get uh, a discount of $50 off of each device uh, of EMP shields uh, when you go through marfuglenews.com slash EMP. This is one of our longest running affiliates because we actually believe in this. We think that it is going to save lives in the event of an EMP or a CME, the natural kind, like a solar flare, uh, as far as a Carrington level event happens. If you have an EMP shield uh, applied to one of your devices, to your generator, to your house, to your car, those things will still be going after it. Uh, these are Keystone military tested. Again, they can block against all three phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3. And, of course, it can protect up to 228,000 amps, enough to, to handle a Carrington-level event. Uh, a Carrington-level uh, event happens today. We have no idea how bad it's going to be, but they say it would be disastrous. Uh, it, it basically depends on whether the United States and most people will be prepared protected against this by the time it happens they happen about every 150 years uh, from the sun and it's been about 160 so technically we're overdue uh, don't want to see it happen but it, again we have uh, solar cycle 22 hitting in around 20 uh, 2024 in that area all of the actual experts are uh, kind of worried about that so again i would highly recommend going and at least checking it out uh, they're very very easy to install in things like cars. Uh, take you a few minutes. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Not only will you get $50 off per device, uh, but you will also be helping our channel. This is the same company that has worked with agencies like DOD, DHS, and of course now the Dempso team helping protect the Texas grid. So you can trust in it. Uh, again, this is what all, the entire country is trusting for their government and their elites. Highly recommend... Uh, Doing what they're doing. I would say, hey, do what the smart people are doing. I have to quote Mitchells versus the Machines, though. If you've seen that, it, it's a kid's... It's supposed to be a kid's movie, but it's freaking a hilarious adult. You know how kid's movies put jokes in them? Uh, they, there's a family that is like a perfect family on Instagram in this movie. And they the alien invasion happens and the the perfect family like does like a strike force formation and does backflips over each other and uh kicks the alien robots hops in their car and gets out and they're like this dysfunctional family that the movie's about they're like let's do what they do and they like hit heads and try to jump over each other's backs and they just it's hilarious my point being is like you you always have that that uh it's do what they do, you know, do what the, do what the smart guys are doing, right? Do what the good family's doing. Bible talk for common people. Thank you again. That's funny. Joe Gomez. Thank you. I appreciate your subscription. Thank you for subscribing. AI. I appreciate you. John Ward. Uh, thank you as well. All the new subscribers. Appreciate you very much. All right, let's get the next uh, caller on and we're going to talk about the shelters and of course, how Ukraine in uh, Kiev are actually preparing a guerrilla defense. They're, the people, dentists, housewives, according to this article, housewives, dentists are basically grabbing their pitchforks and are ready for war. And then again, number is 2244-00-MARF. 
make sure uh, to pop in Renee, first time caller, and wants to talk about the increase in activity. And Adam, I'm trying to get Renee on the line, so uh, give me one second. No worries. And I'll, I'll actually load up the the next caller's uh, link here, and I will go over uh, this real quick. Bomb shelters, guerrilla war, building Ukraine's resistance. It says the table tennis coach, the chaplain's wife, the dentist, and the firebrand nationalists have little in common except the desire to defend their hometown and sometimes halting effort to speak Ukrainian instead of Russian. Situation in Kharkiv, just 40 kilometers uh, from some of the tens of thousands of Russian troops massed at the border of Ukraine, feels particularly perilous. Ukraine's second largest city is one of the industrial centers and includes two factories that restore old Soviet-era tanks and build new ones. This city we'll talk about at, uh, in more detail in just a second. Uh, it looks like we have Renee on the phone. Renee, what is going on? We we did have her. Oh, this is me. Yes, they All it's right, perfect. Because there's so many. It's it's because there's so many planes going over my house that you I keep losing signal. So so what is happening? So um, it looks like it looks like you are in Nevada. So what have you been seeing? Yes, I am. What? Okay, can. Can you hear me? Yep, we can all hear you. Okay. So I live in the most southern part of Vegas, uh, right down the street from Floyd Mayweather. And we don't live by the, any airports. And for months now, we have seen nothing but white commercial-sized planes flying in. You can see them in the sky. They're lined up in the sky, and they take turns making a left coming into Las Vegas. And they're, like, lined up in the sky, and they just come in, like, every five minutes out of the sky. Military helicopters, um, white commercial planes, all white, or all white with a blue bottom. I have to keep my TV on. 50 just to hear the TV because it's so loud, and we don't live near the airport at all i can see the landing gear from my window that's how bad it is now are you oh, saying that this is um, not normal are you saying have you lived there for a long time and now it's picked up or i've lived yes adam i've lived here for 15 years now and we have never had anything like this matter of fact a plane's gonna go over right now and i'm gonna up outside so you can hear and all the Fugle fam can hear how loud it is. All right. It's crazy. Let's do it. So they just keep going over our house. Matter and so let me back up. Okay. So before this whole thing at the border started, right? Um these flights were coming in Sunday nights, Mondays, I mean not on weekends, just flight after flight after flight after flight and I thought to myself hmm let's see at the beginning of all of this um we had uh the CEO of Win Las Vegas step down he was the first person to step down and after he did half of the machines and LV turned into CH machines I'm not American anymore you can go in any casino on the strip and you'll have to hunt to find an American machine. I can tell you that they're buying up properties. They're consolidating this property. This property is owned by this property now. And I'm telling you, if they own the machines and they own whose casinos that the machines are going in, you think they don't own the airport here. I'm telling you, they're they're not flying people from the border in here. And I live the furthest south. The furthest south. There's nothing else besides for California. Right now, here comes another one right over my house. You can hear the landing. You can hear them. Listen. Wow. Hold on. I'm going to turn you up, so don't talk. 
Turn it. Okay. I mean, I can see the lights of the plane. Um, I can see their landing gear. I live in Southern Highlands. I don't live anywhere near the airport. You know, my dog has been choking for like two years and they don't even, my dogs won't even go by the door because we got, I don't know if it's the diesel fuel in the air, but I, I can tell you from being raised by a Marine from the Vietnam era and shout out to the Marines for that, because I guess this is why we're here now, Gen X people that were raised by We might have lost her. No, we got her. I'm, I, I'm here. I'm the, here. Can the you last, hear me? The, the, yeah, the last thing we heard you say is Gen X being raised by. By Marines, you know, by any of the last Vietnam vet era, you know, I'm proud of that. Now I understand why I was raised the way I was. And why I can see the things that I can see that my neighbors apparently can't because it sounds like I live next door to the airport and I live in a $750,000 home. It's crazy. Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm really, uh, I'm just, I'm now I'm suit my, I, I'm super interested in my interest has peaked as far as. You know, why is yeah. uh, now are any of these military planes or are these just commercial planes or? Oh, no. Oh, no, honey. There's military planes that shake the house. But see, they they put things in the sky, you know, so it's, you can only hear it during the day. You know what I mean? They have us where we can't really see up there, you know, it's kind of blocked out. So we can't really see. We can just hear and my daughter and I were sitting in my room this morning about 10 o'clock this morning, and we didn't know if it was incoming. We did, It was that. I didn't know what it was. It was that loud and rattled the house. I, I'm, I'm just being honest. Let's keep it real. And while I have the chance to even say anything, I mean, don't we see that we're getting ambushed here? I mean, do we not see that that's not the people from the border that are coming up here and don't we see that? Don't we see that? I see this. I don't even care. I, I see this. I, I will watch. I don't. I don't work, so I see what's going on here. You know. Yeah. You, and you, you it's have, ugly. Yeah. More it's time. Ugly. More time I'm to observe. You, do, your, do your homework. Find out about the slot machines. Find out about all the properties that are being bought and consolidated. Find out who the CEOs are of these. Find out that the Arab Emirates just signed on with the Win Casino. I don't even know what that even means, you know? But I know that they're using this place to filter through everything, I can tell you that, because it doesn't even look like America here anymore. You would think you were over there right now. Well, Ren You wouldn't even think you were in America. <laughs> Renee, you I, wouldn't. I, I, I get think it. you were... No, I, I, I totally understand. Well, Renee, we're out of time, but I, I do appreciate you calling in, and uh, I, I thank you so much. I, the, I'm now I'm super interested about that area, and I want to I want to look up what is going on. Uh, if you are in Las Vegas as well, yeah. please let us know if you're experiencing yeah. the same thing as Renee. Well, Renee, thank you so much, and, and God bless you, and I appreciate you. God bless you too, honey. That's it. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. God will tell us what to do. Well, it'll be all right. But just know that it is real. It is real. It is real. I'm watching it in live time. It's right here. Well, thank you so much, and you have a wonderful night. That was Renee. Um, so, again, thank you, Bones, for re reiterating uh, that. I appreciate that. So, by the way, just a reminder, um, that caller was doing an amazing job of also trying to watch filter words. Um, so if you're new here, 
Uh, I think that that call made perfect sense, but you do have to pay really close attention because uh, essentially Las Vegas is being taken over and uh, the machines are now owned by other countries. Uh, got that. Uh, military planes flying over 24-7. And again, you can say, well, she's probably by an airport. She's not by an airport. And uh, the area that she's talking about, I've been to Vegas many times. She's saying she's farther away from that. So that's very alarming. As far as the property, everything is for lease. Everything's for sale. Who is buying it? The country that, of course, we are dealing with right now over in the South China Sea. So I understood every word she said. If you're not understanding that, then you're not paying attention. Uh, so again, do not be rude to callers ever. That is the one rule uh, that we really like just strict on. Uh, because if you call in, if you're maybe you're having a bad day, maybe you call in and you stutter because you've had a, a bad day and, and uh, you have a broken tooth or something or a toothache. Never know. You wouldn't want 20 people saying that, you know, you can't talk right. So again, please be respectful. Uh, also understand that some people may have to go around some of the filter words, and that means that you're going to have to really pay close attention. That is the sacrifice we make to stick around because a platform is better than no platform. This is a group thing. This is this is a, a group effort. So the callers, the comment, the commenters down down there, like you guys are awesome. You guys watch the words down there too. That's what is needed because this is a group effort. Many of you weren't around. A lot of the new people that ha have been a part of this channel, you weren't around when we had our Discord. Our Discord was taken down because of too many military, and I know this because it was done right before they everybody dropped things in there. And they did articles about the, the big bad military groups that were getting together and doing bad things, right? We had too many military, over 500 active and retired military in our group, and they didn't like that. They said that uh, we, as the, the Discord owners, were spreading whatever info. We never shared a single thing. It was people swapping directly between each other, and that's, that's why we, we got it. So again, think about that. Um, they even like took down personal accounts and things like like it was crazy. So anybody that was around knows that. Um, by the way, we we have we essentially built our own right. Uh, we are still not able to do anything because of the liabilities that goes along with that and the cost to build and run our own system. People go, oh, well, then use this system, use that system. The problem is, um, again, we need like a staff to be protected. We don't have the ability to have a staff. Uh, you, all of the apps, they're not dependable because they can just cancel you. So it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Dex, you, you would, you're the expert on. I mean, is this just like you yeah, know? It's not it's not easy. It's, it's definitely not easy to replicate what those big platforms do. Um, I, I do want to, if, if you don't mind, I do want to change the subject real quick back to Bob's call. Um, I went and did a cursory, you know, five to five to 10 minute look on uh, worship cams on Twitter. And I pulled together all of the cargo uh, and uh, oil retanker tankers and et cetera. And I put them on the website. So if you want to go to our website and just refresh and scroll down, uh, to Bob's call. I just put them after there. So it logically makes sense. And you can see a lot, uh, including some pictures of, of a massive amount of cargo being loaded into one particular ship in San Diego. Um, but yeah, this stuff's rolling out. Okay. So that, I mean, that's, we now have, wow, look at this. Okay. So once this loads, so these are the webcams that are talking about the pre-position force. Uh, he went and found all of this, got it on our website already. And they're loading up. They're loading up, so people. One of them's an oil tanker, obviously bringing fuel. Uh, the other, uh, others are just car traditional, not traditional, but they're military cargo ships. 
that are sort of like the ships he was talking about, the replenishments or um, um, pre-positioning. Uh, and one of them, I think the San Diego one was just a, a flat out cargo ship, but there's even a picture of all the cargo that they're loading onto that ship. And it's, I mean, that's a lot of cargo. Look at that. This is yesterday, people. We're showing you right now here on your screen. The maritime pre-position force is loading up currently as we speak. As Bob said, this is not a this is not a, a a boat that goes out and just hangs out. This is a boat that goes out for the real deal holy field. So I hope uh, I hope you guys can share this with friends and family and I hope they get to this point. We we really need to get get this out to as many people as possible. I believe we are close. This this really solidifies a lot of what has been happening right now. All right, and then Poland will send shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles to Ukraine. So all, all these different countries are popping in, every, every country in the world. Dex, would you not say, I mean, we've seen so many different countries involved in this. This is a world conflict. I mean... At the very least, this is a world argument. Yeah, and definitely all NATO countries that are, are the ones getting involved. Uh, and, and the ones that aren't are worried about themselves and what do they need to prepare for. So, Look at that. A Polish military aid package for Ukraine is set to include portable anti-aircraft missiles, drones, and ammunition. They're getting ready for the big one. This was a piece, and you can go over to the website and read it. It essentially talks about how it's it's a view from Russia, right? And or I, this is actually what's so funny <laughs> is CNN. I feel like, and I read this all the way through, and Tass's version. Dex, I don't know if you saw Tass's version, but Tass has virtually the same thing, and it was days before this. Or maybe maybe it was hours. I, I think it was hours before this one. Because this was at least yesterday or the day before, right? TASS wrote it first. And I know that the quote has, has ignored Russia's key security concerns. But the actual writing in this um, just gives less respect for CNN than I even had before, which is next to nothing. So, but essentially what they're saying is their view is and others is that they're not respecting Putin's concerns for his security. Like, oh, poor me. There are two different sides to this story. Like we have said, there are new people here that wouldn't know this, but uh, understand if you are in the U.S. right now, would you want Russia, China, and NK as an alliance to move into Mexico? Probably not just as they don't want the U.S., U.K., and everyone else down in Ukraine right on their border. They wouldn't want uh, our missiles there, just like we wouldn't want their missiles in Cuba, so, it, or in Mexico, or in Canada. So there are two sides to this. They are claiming on both, uh, both sides that they're kind of overstepping boundaries and stuff. We don't know what the truth is, but what we do know is is the entire world is prepping, loading, deploying. This is it. I mean, that I can't, I don't know what is closer to it than this. We need a miracle right now for this not to happen. Now, by the way, this shouldn't scare people because at first, this, I think we're going to get a warning before it goes from Ukraine to the world. I hope that we get at least some time before we realize that we're involved or, you know, we're involved heavily, like, you know, draft kind of thing. Hopefully something like that never happens, right? I hope we have warning. I'm on a coastal city. Uh, if anybody should be, you know, more fearful, it would be anybody on the coastal cities. Open House, Texas. Hello, Adam and Dex. Just read an article that President B threatened Russia with semiconductor chip blo blockade. I thought there was a shortage. Your last caller may be onto something. Administration compromise. Who, who knows? They could both be high-fiving in the background. 
Mary Harris and, and then saying, you know, bye bye human pop. We don't need human pop, uh, you lation around here. Bible talk for common people. I've already picked out what neighbors want to eat. Okay, I got that one. That's hilarious. And then we have the. F oh, okay. Before we do that, did I cover this? Okay, so the guerrilla warfare fought by dentists, coaches, housewives would be a nightmare for Russian military plan planners, according to both analysts and U.S. intelligence officials. This was a part of this piece I wanted to show you here. Let's see here. Where did I put it? Okay, so I basically they are looking, and I think that that's why I got the caller. The caller cut this off. What they say, and this is a lot of people on Twitter. There's interviews of people. I don't think that this part is propaganda. I think this is really happening in Ukraine. Uh, my personal opinion, again, you can go look into this yourself and you'll see uh, the actual city and the people there are preparing like pitch, not pitchforks, but in theory, right? They are preparing their own weapons. Uh, there are dentists, there are housewives, there are uh, grocery store workers. There are people that are preparing to defend their city. And it's so crazy because you think about it, they they are in the news and everybody knows that this is about to happen, right? So they are actually preparing for a conflict and they're setting up defenses. This is what, so they're actually, some places are setting up like barbed wire and things like this. Like they're setting up for a great conflict. Imagine if you, in your city, say you're, uh, say you're in uh, Boston, and you start seeing local grocery stores set up, you know, blockades of, of wood cross beams with barbed wire. That's what some of these people are doing. Uh, not only it says this city has to be protected, said Victoria Balasina, who teaches table tennis to teenagers and dyes her cropped hair deep purple at the crown. It says we need to do something not to not to panic and fall on our knees. We do not want this. It says Belisino re recalls being pressured to attend pro-Russia rallies during the protest movement that swept Ukraine after Russia attacked in 2014, a year that utterly changed her life. A, long, a lifelong Russian speaker born and raised in Kharkiv, she switched to Ukrainian. Then she joined a group of, uh, of a dozen or so women who meet weekly in an office building for community defense instruction. Now her Ukrainian near-fluent uh, though she still periodically grasps at words, she can reload a submachine gun almost comfortably. It says this wasn't the life she expected at age 55. 55. But she has accepted it as necessary. Plenty of people in her social cir cir uh, circle sympathize with Russia, but they're not what drives her today. It says, I'm going to protect the city, not for those people, but for the women I am training with. So, again, and I'll read this next part because this, this makes a lot of sense. It says, among her group is Svetlana Putalina, uh, whose husband is a Muslim chaplain in the Ukrainian military, with grim determination and not a hint of panic. The 50-year-old has orchestrated emergency plans for her family and her unit, who will take the children to safety outside the city, who will accompany the elderly parents and grandparents, one of the hundreds of mapped bomb shelters, how will the resistance women deploy? So I, I just want to make a point here that, uh, and it's not only her. There are other people. There are dentists. There are doctors. There are people that are organizing, and they are going to protect themselves. I want you to think about this. If you are ever put in the same position, no matter if you are in New York or if you are in London, if you are in, if you're in down under, okay. If you ever had to fight a ty tyrannical government or you had to fight your own or you had to fight uh, the other side of your country, doesn't matter. What would you do with, in this situation? And, and it's not fear mongering. These people are not panicked and you shouldn't be either. But you should be prepared for anything. And right now, if you haven't sat through all of CV and in the entire world going through all of this and you don't think that this is possible, then I don't know where your head is at. If you don't see all the scandalous stuff going on around us, then you don't realize we are in the most corrupt world we've ever been. 
There is crime going on everywhere around you. And if you haven't paid attention to apps like Neighbors or things like this, uh, then you need to because, uh, and not to be like, oh, paranoid or anything. It's insane. In my neighborhood alone, uh, people are taking huge four foot pipe wrenches and just walking up and knocking on doors. And if somebody answers, they'll hit them and then they'll just jack their stuff. And this isn't made up stuff on the news. This is stuff that they're not talking about. These are actual camera footages of ring all over the place. Uh, I mean, it is insane. People are stealing mail. Uh, that's the tiniest thing, right? People are straight up going up during the day, breaking the window with people inside saying, F you, sit down, I'm taking your stuff. This is happening in real life. This is not the fear on Channel 5. This is the fear on the street over. There are gunshots constantly in even the suburban areas. And a lot of the people that lived in nice areas, they, they, uh, even a, a couple of my neighbors, I've lived here for 30 years. I've never seen any problems. They really think that it's like some bad neighbor that moved in. But what they don't realize is when you look at even the, the surrounding area, uh, you'll see 0.2 miles, 0.3 miles, 0.4 miles, 0.5 miles, everywhere. The crime has just took off because they're not charging people with it. Our world is falling to crap. And if people don't see that, and if people are still asleep watching, uh, you know, watching social media and, and TikTok and thinking that everything is okay and nothing's going on, I have, I, I have very little time for that. I mean, this is getting bad. Dex, you probably know. I mean, <laughs> this is insanity. Uh, yeah, it, it is. And Adam, we're at about less than 19 minutes left total. All right, let's get uh, our next caller on. We have Giant Tyrant. And, oh, this is good. So we've got... Uh, We've got a SpaceX. We've actually have a video here, so let's let's get this on here. Hey, Adam. How giant, you doing? Giant, what's going on? Pleasure to pleasure to talk to you. What's what, going on? Can you hear me good? Yeah. So, what what is the video that we're pulled up here? Uh the you got the SpaceX launch one. I have two things to share. Um, I wanted to go over the the SpaceX launch video real quick, um, and then talk about the other part. Okay, go ahead. I'm, um, I'm playing it right have, now. I have it. Um, I sent Dex the link. It's on my YouTube page. We, we've got it up. Yeah, it's it's already up and playing. Oh, okay. I'm not I'm not watching this. Okay, no bullshit. Well, while you got it on. Um, you can go fast forward to about 45 seconds when it starts. All right, illuminating I'm, better. All right, I'm there. We're all there. All right. I'm trying to... Okay, I'm almost there. I'm loading the page now so I can watch it. All right, I got it now. Yeah, there there it is. Um, it looks... You can see the, the tail. It looks kind of like the wake of a boat, the way it makes that V right there. Yeah, I've actually... No, I don't think I've... I guess I don't... I've not really look too close but it definitely looks like there's almost two rockets yeah it's like it's it's hitting the firmament and scraping across it and that's just like a it's almost like a a boat with a propeller in the water making a wake behind it and it's coming up it's about to slow down and separate the side boosters come off there it goes what a trip. And then it is, um, what? Oh, just wait. <laughs> this, this, this is a pretty good one. I, I haven't been uploading all the videos because there's, there's, there was supposed to be two of them today and then another one tomorrow. Whoa. And they're just, they're launching so frequently. What in the heck? What kind of camera is this again? Oh, I have the Nikon P1000. Yeah, so this, by the way, folks, if you haven't seen, a uh, giant tyrant has called in before. He has a, a very special camera that it has a thousand times optical zoom, I believe. Is that, that's right? It's optical. It's not digital. Yeah, um, I'm not sure the exact specs on it, but it's, 
um, it's it's the the largest um, without going to like DSLR and having like adapter uh, optics on the front of it. It all it's all built in. Wow! Here's, uh, wow! Here's what where it the... gets wild right here. What the hell is it doing? So I'm guessing <laughs> that's, these these that's, are rockets um, that the side booster with, with returning to Earth with their thrusters aligning it and stabilizing the rocket coming back down. It doesn't look like any kind of technology we have that we've ever like seen, but I don't know. Well, well in the theory, I could see, thing, like, I, yeah, th I, I could see what you're talking about. Like it's, it's uh shooting out just like you see in the movies where it's in space and they go, tsh, tsh. but this is like, really, what is the, how is it even, uh, spraying out so far and the, the pulsating that is really a trip I mean it looks like we have upgraded our our tech or something and they claim that um, that it's just illumination from the sunset but that's not that's not any kind of rocket thrust or like combustion fuel that, that they talk about that they're using that's not combustion That's that looks like something else well, they very well may be using stuff that they haven't told the public about yet. I mean, that's and then, that's not right there. That's the main the main uh, the capsule, and the other shot was the um, returning side thrusters. But then right there, there's two more side thrusters. So what was there's only supposed to be two side boosters, and there's two there. But what was that other thing on the other side that there? they're claiming as the side booster that because at that point i don't think they'd release the payload yet but there's too many objects up in the sky to be looking at for what they say is there well it's definitely a very visually uh stunning video uh i mean gosh that, I think that, 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 is... that shot right there that looks like a, a submarine underwater if you look at Google like submarine lights underwater. That's exactly what that looks like right there. Like a light beam just going through the open ocean. Yeah, that's a trip. So, and then we have, we actually have, let me see. There's another piece here. So what are, what are we looking at? There's a Dropbox uh, link here. What is this? Yeah. The, the Dropbox link. Um, uh, the next topic, I guess, um, the, I wanted to talk about the traffic, traffic cams and flight patterns of the un, the unknown flight patterns of the airplanes that are flying all over slow all over town everywhere, um, and like the helicopters. I, I uploaded a couple. There's a few selfie videos that I took on my phone of a helicopter following me um, in the car, and I'm making like a left turn and a right turn, and you can see it out my window. You can see my face and you can see him right over. He's like right over my car while we're driving. And um, there's another one where he's flying right over my house. And then there's another one where he's chasing me down, like down the road. And you can see the light of the plane through the trees. And it's just following me. I'm going probably 30 or 40 miles an hour. And he's on my camera through trees and everything with this spotlight on my car. Um, and I also sent Dex a link from the Washington Post and also another one from the FDOT, the Florida Department of Transportation. Um, they're talking, it's like a 2022 update on all the traffic cameras. They have a piloting program with um, all the flight training schools. It, it started in Australia, Australia and they pushed the propaganda that there wasn't enough um, reaction with the traffic cameras that they weren't getting the results they were looking for. So they adopted airplanes to be incorporated into it. Um, and I've been paying really close attention to it. And it seems to me like what they're saying, they're using it for the technology they're saying they're using it for. But from what I've observed and with the helicopters, 
at me and watching their reactions, um, it, it looks like they've they're going after people on their their list because um, I've watched them watch me and I watch other drivers around me and they don't drive aggr- or they'll be driving aggressively and I'm just driving normal and they're following me and I'm like this guy just blew through a stop sign and you guys are just letting them go go on by but it, it's like the sheriff's helicopters and um there's some military ones too but they um they're using that for cuz I've seen them following me and then I um, they're following me for a good while and then I watch them just go off after another car like but it, the that article I don't know oh, you have it right there the connected the connected vehicle pilot yeah, so um, you're saying that this kind of supports it, and there are, are so yeah. there are locations that are deploying these these things. Well, they're using the flight schools, like flight training schools for um, training pilots, but they're using they're I think what they're using is like a platform similar to Uber or DoorDash, where it's pinging locations of who's near that pilot. So I'll be driving down the road and every single plane come because I live on in Florida and they always fly down the beach and in, in a straight line to go down the coast. And I will, I'll watch them turn as I turn, I'll make a, they'll, I'll make a turn and they'll I'll, I'll have to stop just to make sure that what I'm seeing is as accurate that, I'll make a right turn and I'll, I'll pull into a place and they'll be right over top of me and I'll pull back out and pull on the road and go, go another area. And the same, an airplane, not even a helicopter will follow me that these planes are flying at like 40 miles, 40 miles an hour or less. And they're not on the flight radar map. I, I always pull it out and check and they're, they're always like an un, not even available on the radar. Um, but they're, yeah, they're using the, um, the traffic cameras tied up with the, the flight training school. And a lot of people haven't really been able to put that together, but I've been, um, I've been trying, I'm trying to get a lawsuit going on, but it's going to be hard. I need a lot of hard evidence of like, I need to get a, a GoPro and mount it to the roof of my car so I could have a little bit more proof of what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to, uh, <laughs> it's a hard subject to even scratch the surface on because there's so many things that are covering it up and no one wants to even hear that a helicopter or an airplane could be following you. But there's the article right there from the Florida department of transportation. Uh, the company is called AccuSensus. They, they're, they're making all those, um, artificial intelligent traffic cameras. And what they're doing is mimicking the light. They're they're using light optic technology from instead of the old technology of fiber optics, they just did away with the fibers and they've figured out how light spectrums and rays work and the AI takes that information and can develop it into a face or a tree or a bug on the tree or whatever they're looking at. So it's 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 pretty complicated, but um, I think I <laughs> I think I stumbled into the right direction at least. But I was hoping I don't really have a lot of like um, I haven't saved all the information that I've been researching on. So maybe someone could take this information and well, dig giant, a little deeper and giant have, have some more hard, hard evidence. But well, again, there's um, enough people. Somebody yeah. said uh, planes can't go 40 miles an hour. Uh, I just pulled up something that says they can go as slow as 31 miles per hour, or at least small planes. I'm sure yeah. you're not saying a commercial plane yeah, is falling. Like, the, like a Cessna or a Piper, like single engine. Some of them are double engine, but yeah, they're, it's definitely not normal. Um, the uh, did you did you play? You, I didn't see you play the um, the any of the videos I sent to the Dropbox. Did yes, I those? yeah, we did. Um and then the sound was yeah. very loud. I I totally hear that. And I can play it on the way out. We are out of time for the show though. Um and uh we we have linked all of the videos so people can go. If if you uh relate to what Giant Tyrant is saying 
you can actually go over to the website and all of the videos will actually be attached so you can then go check them out for yourself. I'll play uh, one more here as well. Uh, but Giant, we are out. We have to make sure we get our leaving announcement so people can follow us over on to Marfugal Jams. So thank you so much for right. calling in tonight. Yeah. yeah, thank you for your time. I appreciate you, Adam. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yes. All right, well, thank you so much. Giant Tyrant. If you haven't checked out his channel as well, his link to his channel uh, where he has uploaded all these videos is right there on the website. Uh, this is another piece. Um, so the, the the here's the thing: I have seen a plane fly extremely slow. Uh, I don't. Th I didn't think in this case I wasn't paying attention if it was following me or not. But I saw a, a Cessna that was going so slow I couldn't believe it. I was walking. And it was it was super low, and I I was thinking, man, this might be uh, a student. So before instantly thinking that someone's statement is crazy, just think about it and actually uh, look at what they're saying, because he did have a piece of information. Uh, they are talking about deploying a, a technical uh, thing here. Now, when you actually read later on in the second paragraph here, you may actually go, oh, maybe there's something there, because I guess you have to realize the tracking is getting draconian. And if you are on some sort of list, if say, I don't know, you are part of a certain group of people, or maybe you're just a parent going to PTA meetings and having a problem with how your school acts, you might just be on a list. Dex, thank you uh, um, again for putting all of that on the website. Uh, very freaky that the warship cams show that the maritime positioning system is basically there. Uh, Freedom Convoy truckers blockade U.S. border with Montana, Alberta protests against... Make sure to go over to the website and read this. It's very important. Uh, it is 50,000. We've mentioned it every night. Uh, you can go over and check this out. We uh, ran out of time. Dex, do you want to tell them about the web only? Yeah, Adam, I, and I was uh, going to say also, um, the C-5, if you're familiar with those big cargo planes, the C-5 can do something like 80 miles per hour or 88 nautical miles per hour at its slowest and still maintain flight. So, And that's a huge, huge plane. So, Well, that's uh, what I yeah, saw. That's what I saw what, that night about a year and a half ago after the, ast or the well, not asteroid, but after a meteor went over, uh, I videotaped that. And it yeah. was so slow I could make out, and it was so low that I could make out. And it's so, it's almost magical when you see a plane that big going that slow. Yeah, they were made, a lot of them were made in Marietta uh, where I grew up, and we used to see them fly all the time. And it was, I was got the biggest trip out of how slow they would just cruise because they were just doing loops, you know, going around, touch and go. But, uh, but yeah, head over to marfuglenews.com, uh, click on a thumbnail for the show. There's lots of great stuff there. Uh, we probably don't have time to go through it all, but. Believe me, you want it. You want to check it out because there's a lot you're missing out on, uh, as we've said earlier in the show. So, uh, if you're on YouTube, open that description and click the first link you see called Show Notes. That'll get you right there. And these, okay, so these, these right here, you go over and look, and it's right there. Future USNS John Lewis. Replenishment Oiler leaving San Diego for sea trials February 1st, 2022. So yesterday you had these these things being filled up. They're leaving. Wake up, people. And Adam and everyone that's watching, if you're on YouTube, in about a minute, we're going to be flipping over to Jam. So if you wonder why it cuts off, we're running on a two-hour time limit. Yes, so there's a we have a third channel. We have Marfugal TV. We have Marfugal News. That is at 208,000 subscribers. Thank you, guys. Thank God bless you. Uh, and then uh, make sure to go over and check that out. Ripple Effect, Aliens or Fallen Angels as part of the Great Deception. The Bible warns repent and be baptized. Thank you. Uh, Saul Rosenberg, why is Boston landlocked in the thumbnail? What does the thumbnail mean? Uh, f we will talk about that later. What's wrong with the phone? What's wrong with the phone? Nothing. Oh, oh, I think it was just a delay or something. Um, or maybe I think he was trying to watch it on the thing. But anyways, have a good night, guys. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. It's now time for the shoutro. We're going to continue. Uh, I'm going to be saying thank you to everybody. 
It's the credits of the show. Follow us over on Marfugal Jams to hear it. Uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Hang out with your Fugal fam over there. You, we get to chat more. We Again, the chat goes on. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout-out.